Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. And before we get started, I just want to say a special thank you to all of the mothers out there. A very, very happy Mother's Day. So this show, gosh, I've missed you guys. This show is going to be fun because we're going to do something you've been asking for. And that is hi-fi audio as it relates to VHS. Now, if you're like me, you threw away your VHS with, you know, the trash, you know, 20 years ago and never, never looked back. But perhaps you did think, what have I done? If not, you might should have because that VHS tape player, if it was a forehead hi-fi one, was probably one of the best audio devices that you ever had. You're not going to want to miss this. This is Recordology. Can you imagine having a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck, say an Akai or a Sony, a really high quality one that could even outperform a compact disc on audio specification and signal to noise ratio and just throwing that in the trash? Well, that's what you and I did when we threw out our VHS recorders. A VCR is one of the most fantastic hi-fi devices ever devised, no pun intended. So let's talk really quickly about, and I'm, this, the specs will blow you away. The specifications will blow you away. And we're going to start um, by actually opening this up, taking a look at how it works, talk about the M lacing. We're going to talk about the components inside, all that good stuff. But as a, as a quick recap, VHS was developed by JVC. It was released in 1976 in Japan, 1977 here in the United States of America. It succeeded in a format war between VHS and Sony's Betamax. Betamax went on to great fame in broadcast through similar formats called Betacam and Beta SP, among others. My wheelhouse are those Betacam tapes. I also was very well versed in three quarter inch Umatic, which is cool stuff, very different, but shares a lot of the same principles with what we're looking at here today. So now let's take a look at the specifications of the VHS recorder we threw away compared to some other audio formats that we hold on to dearly. Okay, now here is an interesting chart showing the specification performance of VHS Hi-Fi, which is the second to bottom there, right above compact disc, against other common audio formats such as reel-to-reel -reel tape and compact cassette tapes as well. It may surprise you that on the frequency response, wow and flutter, and dynamic range, VHS tapes outperform them all. In fact, they nearly perform as well as a compact disc at the bottom there. See what I mean? We shouldn't have thrown these things out because they are indeed an amazing tool, let alone the fact that you can record hours of hi-fi audio at fantastic quality. So run to the thrift store, guys. Time to get a VHS player, but let's test it. Okay, so let's start off by looking under the hood here. Uh, and I have a tape in here still. <laughs> and it's not because it's been in here for 20 years. I actually, this is my daily driver unit, and it just happens to have a tape in there. Out to sea. That's a great movie. So I am going to eject the tape, and we'll take a look. Here it comes. I think it's an amazing thing. I, you know, I've always been fascinated with how these work. I know I'm a big geek, but let's take a look at some of these components in here. Okay, so over here we have the power module, and it's interesting how they use this real estate. Basically, it's like a deconstructed DC transformer, but obviously the AC power comes in there, and there's a monster capacitor right there. Very well labeled components, which I think is cool. Over on this side, this is the coaxial module, the RCA inputs and outputs, some capacitors down there, and the different sections of the PCB are pretty well labeled. One thing I think that's pretty interesting, you'll notice that the back, there's no vertical panel in the faceplate. Like usually there's like a circuit board that goes, you know, vertically, and there isn't one in this case. You'll see instead, as I zoom in further, these mechanical I don't know what you even call them. But they're basically a piece of plastic. So it, the, on the front, you've got the button. And on the back, it literally just depresses a micro switch on the circuit board. And it's kind of genius because it prevents them from having to have another board 
go vertically in the front. You can see down here the uh, we're looking out through the tape slot. That's not a view you usually get. <laughs> and over here, same thing, just these big relay kind of almost like rocker switches that control a micro switch down on the board level right down there. So here's the way this works. The tape path starts here and goes around this way. This thing right here is called a tape drum and it is a helical scan system. So you'll see that this right here, this is the drum which houses the heads. The heads are embedded in the drum, these little marks right there, those little openings. It's at an angle. That allows the system to get a lot more real estate on half inch wide tape. So looking at half inch tape like VHS, by the way, beta is the same tape size, half inch. If you were to record up and down, you would be limited by that half inch. However, by going with a helical system where it's at an angle, you get a lot more real estate because it's going at an angle. So you can get you know, nearly two inches by the angle that you're using it versus just a half inch. So you get more real estate. That drum rotates at 1800 RPM and every revolution represents one frame of video. And the only recording and playback that's done with the drum head assembly is video. The audio is completely separate and I'll show you that in a minute. So essentially you've got an erase head right here, the drum with the video heads in it here, You've got other sensors, and you've got down here, you've got the audio head. So the audio is done at a different position than the video. So if you were to line it up and look at it visually, the video part of what's on a tape is in a different location than the audio. Here's a pinch roller. It's not too unlike an audio cassette mechanism. It really, really isn't. So let's go ahead and insert a tape. Again, we're gonna use the out to C tape, because it's just what I have on hand. And before I forget, uh, these tapes, a lot of times, well, you'll see that they say Dolby Surround. So either they're encoded with Dolby Surround, which typically indicates Dolby Pro Logic, which is an analog surround sound. This is way before Dolby 5.1 and others of that nature. This literally is a mono rear channel, a center channel front, and left and right stereo. So, Kind of basic there. So let's go ahead and insert our tape. You'll see that it gets threaded around the drum as such, and it gives off that familiar VHS hum noise. I'm gonna hit stop and eject the tape so you can see what that looks like a little bit closer. It's quite a fantastic thing. I think it's quite interesting. Let's look at it thread once more. Pretty amazing stuff. So we're making good contact with the electromagnet, that's the erase head. We're making good contact with the record head. Let's zoom in down there so you can see how that works. Pretty fascinating stuff. I just powered it off by accident, so the drum is coming to a, to a stop. Now, if you remember, the cheap units were two head units. And basically that meant that there were two heads in the drum, which worked fine, it was okay. The problem being that if you wanted to pause the tape, there would be a big nasty line through the middle of it. You couldn't like freeze frame, hit pause and get a good clean image. You needed four heads in order to do that. And when you got up into the four head range, you also were dealing with the hi-fi stereo units. As you can see, this one is a Panasonic four head hi-fi stereo Omnivision VHS. And it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's a basic unit, you got power, You've got a toggle for the input of VCR or TV. That basically switches between the coaxial input and the RCA input. It does have a channel up and down, and then very basic transport controls, record, stop, fast forward, rewind, and play. It does have VCR Plus, which was a godsend of a technology. Basically, if you wanted to record something off of television, rather than program your VCR, which was notoriously hard, Although my grandma-in-law was a, was a god at you know programming her VCR, it was amazing. I couldn't do it, but she could do it fantastically. But they had this thing called VCR Plus where you could go into the TV guide and there would be like a little, I think it was a six or seven digit number next to every single TV show. All you had to do is on your remote control, put that number in and it would automatically set the right time, the right channel. It was fantastic. 
So there is the basic operation of a hi-fi stereo VHS recorder. This one I picked up Goodwill a couple years ago for like five bucks. My wife was like, what are you doing? And <laughs> it's good to have, trust me. I still have tapes like out to see that I haven't bought on DVD or Blu-ray or anything. And I actually use it. I know it's crazy, but what I really want to explore today is the sound quality. And for that, we're going to do some direct audio feed. Now, one of the benefits of only doing two shows a week is I have a little bit more time to spend on the show. So you guys asked for it. I'm going to deliver it. We're going to do a direct feed sound test. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to record some audio onto a hi-fi VHS tape, and I'm going to play it back, direct feed, and compare that with the same audio recorded onto a compact cassette. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use a standard quality VHS tape. I'm gonna use a type one ferric oxide compact cassette tape, and I'm going to use Dolby B because VHS used Dolby B. By the way, when we're looking at the tape itself, you can't see it, but if you were to be able to see it, uh, the video, like we said before, is a helical scan system at an angle. The uh, control track is a linear track at the bottom, and then the audio track is a linear track at the top. So high quality pre-recorded tapes like this, apparently this is a rental, I just realized that. Uh, I promise I didn't steal this tape. It just, you know, sometimes you bought used rental tapes. Trust me on this one. Pre-recorded tapes such as this were recorded in SP mode, which is superior performance. That used the most tape because it was faster. Again, like other analog media, the more the merrier. So the more real estate you have to describe the electrical signal, the higher the quality. So SP was the fastest and best. You also had LP or long play. Then you had one that was even slower than that. And you could fit like 12 hours on a tape if you use some of those modes. But the downside is, you know, the quality did suffer. But using SP, and good tape, you could get eight hours of hi-fi audio on one VHS tape. And VHS was designed to be affordable, easily serviceable, easy to use, interchangeable tape system. You know, it was really designed from the ground up to be a very user-friendly and appealing technology. So enough of that, let's go ahead and jump into the sound test and let's judge for ourselves if this really does sound better than a compact cassette. Okay, for this test, I'm gonna be using my Sony D131 Walkman because it has the line output. We are connected to the line input on the back of the VCR. And as far as media goes, I am using an old uh, Maxell high quality cassette tape and I'm defeating the record tab, which has been removed so that we can record on it. So let me go ahead and put this in there. Make sure that we are Rewound, oops, or I'm just gonna hit eject right away because that's cool. Let's try that again. And we'll do the test. So let me go ahead and make the recordings and we'll give it a listen. I think the VHS sounded a tad bit better to me, but it was very, very minimal. Let me also preface this by saying that I had to encode this to a compressed digital format. So there's gonna be a little bit of signal loss in that regard. However, in spite of that, I do think I heard a slight improvement with the VHS Hi-Fi. It certainly was as good, if not a little bit better than compact cassette. So there you go. Okay guys, and that's gonna do it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe, select the bell notification, select all so you don't miss a single thing. That's gonna do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you next time.